So if you're in a small business, Lisa's firm, where she works is fantastic. So Lisa, tell me what you do. I work for Wilfred Smith Solicitors. Our head office is in Sheffield. Uh, we provide HR and employment law to businesses all over the UK. Wow. And how do you do that? Is that like a, an online thing, an app thing, uh, what do you call it? Telephone, computer, how do you do that kind of service stuff? So we do a bit of both. We do online, we do teams meetings with some, some of our clients. Um, for local clients, we go out and visit them as well, talk to them talk through the services, what their needs are. And sometimes they'll just give us a call to go out and speak to them and see them and, and just have a general conversation. I think to go and okay. So always on the telephone to the clients, always been love good chat with our clients. That's oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's always, oh, I've learned in business that communication is everything. so important to talk. You're a law firm. We are, yeah. So with the law firm, you're providing... Advice or just advice? So we've got all sorts of legal advice. We do commercial advice. We do debated advice. What's commercial advice for our younger viewers that are watching? What do you mean by commercial advice in a, a legal framework? So our commercial advice basically means we provide a number of different services through legal. So some people want HR legal support. Some people ask us about things about to do with housing, you just call them commercial. Right, so, yeah. Right. And then other people will ask us things about private prosecutions. Um, and criminal law, wow. we also do that too. Private prosecution? Yeah. So what, what does that mean? It, what, what, it describe a, like a private prosecution case. Yeah. That's a court. So basically, the private usually get clients to send that to you that they've had a scenario. Yeah. Sometimes it's to do with business, selling a business, sometimes it's to do with the house. <laughs> So basically what that means is they come to us directly to act on their behalf and do the legal support. They've got criminal charges, support, the representation department. And the other thing to think about with this criminal law, so let's say I, I don't know, do something naughty, what happens next? So if you've got whether it's a speed fine or you've been in trouble and you've been arrested for particular issues, um, to name a few, you've been fighting, uh, football fighting. Fighting? Yes. So that, that's not my thing about my able to run and not fight. <laughs> So basically, if you've been charged and you call the summons, I will do representation for you. Paul firm has 40 years of doing criminal law. 40 years of doing criminal law. Wow. That's I'm lucky, I'm saying that I've not had any major issues with. I've been, I've been a victim, I've been a victim of a fraud so once. That cost me a lot of money. I think mean, it cost me 1.2 million, that thing, but um, yeah, that wasn't bad. So criminal law, interest on the law, and this is, this is a service you provide England, Scotland, Wales, all over the country, all yes, over the world. Where do, where do you cover? We cover all of the UK, England, Scotland, Wales, England, Ireland, right now, and then different laws. We have covered the whole city. We have the whole city. We have a number of staff based all over, so they've got the head in time to be on fire. Whether it's TV, tablet belt, but like I say, by the local mall and the other team, we can't visit them as well, so they can have face to face visits all the time, do they? I think so. I think you do yeah. it all face to face. It's just that if you can't read all of the UK, let's say on Dan Cornwall, sometimes it's like, I don't know, eight hours from life. Yeah, that's going to be a team speaking, I'm afraid. Well, even then, on team speaking, nowadays, most people communicate by team speaking. Some of our biggest clients, we've got some really big clients out there. They love it to talk to me, it's in which can't always get on. So a lot of time, you've got always an assessment to go on tonight, save that time, look at every seat, speed and freeze, on the telephone, they'll the telephone these days, they'll let out of the telephone because... <laughs> it's always good to talk. Yeah. So what else, what else can we help with? So I, I mean, what's your like typical customer of nice? Is it a small business like three man band, ten man band, fifty? You, you, what's, a, what's your sweet spot of business? We're very unique to the fact that we've targeted the smaller businesses. So five staff, five staff mm -hmm. is that is pretty that well. Brilliant. Um, five to so about twenty twenty five. They're our target market as well. With the service, there's no restrictions to it. Um, we have people when it's um, got like just working the staff. It makes no difference. And then we have smaller companies that have two and three staff, they have PAYE staff. Some of them have subcontractors as well. So they're there as well, there's settlement agreements and things like that. So we've got everything. So let's make sure they've got. So fantastic. I've got a link to the website of all the services that we can be provided. 
by Lisa's firm. You have to remind me that they're up terrible with names. It's Wilfred Smith, the Moreover is Sheffield. Fantastic. I don't think I've been to Sheffield yet. I mean, this is my first time to Barnsley today. I mean, I, I nearly went this morning because I had a bit of spare time. I didn't pack any socks. So I picked up socks. And I was interested in the camera equipment because obviously we're doing some interviewing now with cameras. I need an extra SDD card and the shop was at Sheffield. So tell me. Why are northern people so much more friendlier than southern people? This big north south thing. Come on, <laughs> tell me about divide, it. Isn't what is, it. Why is I think so friendly? I know. Well, the thing is, just about where I'm actually going here in the north, and when it stops to talks, yeah, everyone's got a little story to tell. And people listen. I think down south is they're all so busy, so high speed, and don't have the time to take a few minutes. So I think that's where it comes from. We love to have a lot of that. Cause, um, even like me today, we didn't have that with each other. We both more. And it's not necessarily business related. It's just, yeah, I did that, or I know someone that did that. And then you end up having a chat before you know it. You know, so why is that? Do you, do you think that's read the, you know, I don't like calling it north, south, and some it's like <laughs> stuff, but it's kind of like true, really. But why is that? You know, why, why do people talk more here than down there? I don't understand. I mean, it's straight. I just think it's all about timing. I make nice. time here, people give the time that they want to give the time. Is that because like commuting time is less and people it's more community based living? I think COVID had a lot to do with it as well. So I think during COVID we all realised that how much we miss people, how much we miss friends and how much talking and just how important the time be together was. But I think I've noticed since COVID people have all friendly want to take the board, want to have a chat to board. They want to know your business a little bit more, so all oh, that's sad. But yeah. it's true, I mean I think I was talking to someone earlier and they said to me, I'm sat on the train, I'm in London. They look at me like I'm a bit strange when I start talking to them. Yeah, if I do that when I'm in Sheffield and Barnsley, they just talk to me and say, hi, how's the day? Yeah, it's good, thanks. And, and I think people just nowadays just want to know that if you, in fact, you travel in a train, but you sat all by yourself, I just start with two hours. It can be a very lonely period of time. So we sat there suddenly and say, I need to have chat. Before you know it, the experience, your journey's not fast enough. They've had a chat with somebody. I can... It's true, though, but sometimes I think in London you think, are they gay? Are they trying it on? Are they fancy? Is there something going on? Like, oh my God, weirdo in my head. Oh my God, weirdo in my head. Hang on, what's that person doing? Talking to me. We don't talk down here, don't talk to me. I'm on a train, I'm in London. You think I'm bloody crazy? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Your brain's like 100 miles an hour, is it? Thinking over thick there, they don't speak to them at all. Well, it's sad. Uh, I always talk to people on trains. I don't care where I am, I love to talk to people. We should be talking, and that's the thing, we shouldn't be talking. Whether it's a couple of minutes, 30 seconds, we shouldn't be talking because another thing as well is you never know what another person's going through. I think so, that, I, yeah, yeah, I think it's important that if you just, just hi, how are me, you? For me, I think with me and my journey, my daughter was critically unwell. I struggled oh, okay. mentally. Uh, and, and I found sea swimming, and sea swimming was my saviour. I started going to church again, which I hadn't been for like years. And just having that peace, and like that place to find peace, and then talking to people, which is so important. I think it's so away from being a little bit more hard. There's a stress if you get to the as well. If you sit only train for two hours, and you've got a lot going on there. It's not so Going home. All that force that you can take. Some of the training is about to be constant. Before you know it, like you and I now, we're off of the chat. Now, the time you get home, you're like, and you've relieved that tension and stress. And it's a sort of somebody that knows I'm going to tell you a story, they don't know you, yeah. and it doesn't pass that. And you've just relieved of what's going on in your head. I will come back to it. When I find I, I also discovered meditation with pit space. Which I've never done before, and for me, I'm a, I don't know, I must be like 30,000 minutes of headspace, and my two daughters are 12 and 16. And when you have challenges, it's so important to talk. Meditation for me, when you can switch off, breathe. I think Richard Branson used to say the power analysis for him were the best thing we'd ever had. And I've now listened to you, and I've seen you, and I've been using the best meditation. Best thing I've ever done. No, so you speak to you like me about your statement. No, you're not valid. The best thing I've ever done. Right. And Med it's nice to hear that. We've the bail as well, kind of with great respect. No, but it's, it's I mean, with my journey, I mean, twice I felt suicidal. And I was in a really bad place. Daughter was critically unwell. We had surgery in Great Ormond Street. And now she's fine. Now she's recovered. But when I was at my worst, there was one occasion I went sea swimming and I nearly drowned. And I actually didn't care with, like, whether I survived or not. And then I realised that I needed to talk to someone, but I didn't know who to talk to. And that was the whole thing.
Yeah, it was in the heart. And I think that's also a stigma because you're a male as well. People don't know the whole, is, is it okay for a man to say that I don't feel okay? And who do I tell I don't feel okay? Whereas now the courage of men's parts in look, you're not alone. It's okay to talk, we're all there for you. But you've got this whole macho thing, isn't it? But a bad, it's all going to be okay, oh. it's got to carry the burden. Right, it's, no, it's true. Yeah. But now we're encouraging it to come out, we're encouraging it, we're encouraging everyone to talk. I mean, it's interesting. I think for me, I saw a footballer recently, I can't remember his name, and he played for Tottenham, and he came out about his challenges. And that by being a shy profile celebrity was fantastic because I'm out other people. Deli Ali. Deli Ali. Deli Ali came out and he did what he did and that's going to win out something. And it encourages people to say the things have happened or whatever, but it's okay to mark. He can't look at it, said it, to encourage people to like that, but younger children to say, look, I've struggled and I need his help. No, I thought that gets to that point in life. So that's really odd. No, no, it's for me, I think I do a lot of sea swimming and cold showers. Right. And again, calm my mind. We can't be either a cold bath or a cold shower. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and she went through one morning in Valley quite in water time in Paddy. She had no one time to destroy all the time. It's a little weird stuff. So she would better swing in the face to be out for spinning and free. And right in my show was the click and make school on the house. She would go to any riches we inside her drama. She said, mate, you could play some four with the wood going screwing in balls. COVID. And I killed with this thing. He's like, oh, he's saying, give us a nine. Thank you for your boss, master. Did they put you in the way? You were ahead of the average of switched to a base. I have no one to talk to. It's the same one. I'm going to read it. I'm going to send it. They don't understand. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to send 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 it. It's very detrimental. It's going to help for that age. And I'm going to send it. 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 I do what's going on. Right. So to come out the other side of this hell, so where you are, maybe you can but you can that it's there, you have to tell it for me. So I will keep me I mean I, I do both I don't go swimming and stuff. Yes. And I do get other guys that reach out to me and say, hey, Paul, yeah. thank you, you've saved my life because there's one guy who was suicide to pull cold showers has changed my eyes. I feel so much better. And another guy had a tough time and he lost his business or lost his job, lost his income. He was at the pressure of losing his home and he started doing cold showers and, and that helped him just calm his mind that he was. Because when you're, when you're freezing cold, it's, yeah. nothing matters other than, how am I going to survive? That's it, that's it's, it. It's, it's freezing. It's, 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 it. it's, it's, it's five, it's five, it's five <laughs> degrees. You know, it's nuts. You can't bear you nuts. You know, it's a bear. Everything just appears. They're thinking, oh my God, that oh, it's cold. And it's going to speak to me. Because I the same as the industry. Helping people. Well, the golden man. That's something I have. And we need help. Pick up the phone, give Lisa a call. She's a lovely lady, as you can see, from this great interview. I'm so pleased that she agreed. Well, a little bit of her ass from the boss. No, 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 I can't say that word these days. No her ass, but a little bit of encouragement. Let's see someone else on the camera. And Lisa, thank you so, so much. Lovely to talk to you, and thank you, and uh, best to bet you. Thank you. Cheers.